As women, we are strong. One of you is about to become Miss Universe. Miss Trinidad Tobago is Miss Universe. We are resilient. They are more accepting today, the African in us, than they used to. We are nurturing. We are going to call you Calypso Rose, which means Rose is the mother of all flowers. We each have a story that can inspire and motivate others. I thank God for every blessing he has given me, especially this year. Every week at the Xanadu Tropical Resort, we chat with some of the most beautiful women who are making an extraordinary contribution to Trinidad and Tobago. They share their journey unscripted and real. This is The Pink Ego. Today on The Pink Ego. I'm Samantha John. I'm a TV news anchor as well as a radio producer. Welcome to Connections here at Star 947 HD, 9 a.m. to 12 noon, Monday to Friday, here at the Home of the Stars. I'm Sammy Joe, and I'm definitely going to be taking you on a... The Prime Minister, Dr. Kate Rowley, recognizes and congratulates the women and girls of Trinidad and Tobago on the significant con contributions they have made and continue to make towards the successful development of the nation. Samantha, hi, how are you? I am good. <laughs> it's good, good to have you here with me right now. Well, thanks for inviting me and thanks for the drink. No problem. <laughs> I just, you know, I was so excited when I heard that you said that you would you'd be here because I, I mean, I've watched you on television for a long time and um, I've always been fascinated with just, you know, the way that you present yourself and not just on, you know, the, um, television, but just also I've seen you in person as well and I always found that, you know, you have a presence about you. Oh, thank you. You know, no problem. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think most importantly, a lot of times you see people and you think okay you know them or you, you feel connected to them uh, tell me a little bit about your your journey where did it all began for you really mm -hmm. um, I guess I was um, always a creative person yeah. um, the story that I most vividly remember is that I liked you know putting on little shows for my family in our living room I was the yeah. coordinator of my siblings and okay. I would make us act and sing and <laughs> pretend to be in television commercials and my grandmother had this habit of um, when we came to visit her during the July August vacation or Christmas vacation we, we stayed with her mm -hmm. and my siblings myself and my cousins she had a cassette recorder mm -hmm. and she would encourage us to come and record our voices singing and telling stories and doing narrations and I had loads of cassettes. My voice was on most of them. Yeah. And many years later, when I got into broadcasting, mm -hmm. she reminded me about the, these cassettes. Yeah. And she said she was not surprised that this is the career that I chose for myself. So that, that's like the earliest indication. Yeah. But there's an indication based on the fact that I was doing that and I was not actually encouraged by anyone mm. to pursue a career maybe in theater to pursue a career maybe in media mm -hmm. so it was very strange that I was able to touch on it and then still find it without mm -hmm. being guided right are you the the eldest or do you know I am the eldest of five children five okay yes. how does that how do you think that now I mean now being your own person your own woman how do you think that has um, shaped who you are in terms of just being the eldest and having to take charge from such a young age or just taking charge because that's your personality I guess yeah just being like <laughs> yeah in charge being yeah. the, the bossy one being mm -hmm. the uh, um, sometimes I feel like uh, at a point in time I was the most responsible yeah. one uh, yeah, but um, everybody kind of grew into their own, yeah. so I don't really have that pressure okay. anymore. But I've always been a person who's all who's always in charge yeah. and take the lead. I'm, sometimes I have difficulty with that with my own immediate family, mm -hmm. where I almost micromanage everything that uh, we do. Okay. So I don't get to always sit back and relax and 
you know, enjoy the moments and enjoy all the, the triumphs and the goals and, mm -hmm. and the rewards. So I have to work on that. I, I understand that completely. And I think recently I, I tried to create some more balance in, in, in my space as well because I was always like that, trying to think about everything and map out everything at every point in time, you know? And it's funny that you say that too because when I was, I was growing up, um, I would be the one around the house, you know, um, singing and, and all the commercials on television and whatever the case may be. So it's actually kind of funny that these childhood things kind of, even if you, you again, you haven't really been steered into that direction, it's just, you, you just, that's your passion. You that find was your, yourself. Exactly. Yes. So tell me a little bit about Samantha, teenage, teenage years. That would um, be interesting. <laughs> I, I don't think it was that interesting. It wasn't that, it wasn't that interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think I was uh, overall, and, yeah. and, you know, an average student, mm -hmm. average child. I did well in school. Mm -hmm. I could have tried harder. Mm -hmm. um, I never, I, I was involved, like I was on the swim team and the okay. cricket team for a little while. I never, I never like really yeah. took any of those things, you know, too, too seriously where I thought, hey, maybe I should concentrate on this a little more. It kind of just touched on everything. Mm -hmm. I think because, as I said, I have five children in our family, mm -hmm. you know, it was hard for my parents to see that yeah. they're super focused on Samantha on this one yeah. thing because their attention was divided. Exactly. Especially being the oldest too, he's like, oh, she could, you know, she's... Yeah, and I was doing okay. So, yeah. you know, basically leave it as that. Mm -hmm. um, I did get married when I was 18. Okay. And uh, I had my son a couple of years later. Um, well, we sometime after we divorced it didn't really work out mm -hmm. but he was the having my son was the was the thing that really kept me focused and kept me mm -hmm. you know in check yeah. because you're young you're in your 20s you're working um, the working environment is not always the friendliest yeah. so a young person would have bailed and jumped ship a long time ago right. but I was in the media I knew I really loved it um, it had its ups and downs and during the downs mm -hmm. I always knew that I have someone else depending on me mm. rather than I'm just, just doing this for famous. myself yeah. and I think that was one of the having him and him being there was one of the main things that kept me in the media mm -hmm. when things seemed daunting mm -hmm. and um, it worked out to me yeah uh, tell me about your first time you know doing anything within the media, maybe uh, your first radio, um, TV, uh, you know, yeah, news. You want, me, news you want me to go back like a really long time ago? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, the first time I, I did yeah. radio, I okay, was working at Radio, radio okay. Trinidad. Mm -hmm. That's the AM band, not AM in the morning, like some people right. think. Yeah. Um, actually, the AM band is one of the strongest bands. It yeah. can go over mountains and reach um, different is. islands. Yeah, that's true. So we had a lot of reach. Mm -hmm. um, I was privileged to be on Radio Trinidad because it, there still were a lot of the older senior announcers working there. So mm -hmm. I got my, I got some of the training yes. while I was there from Trip Sutherland, Edison Carr. Selma Ayi was there for a while while I was there, so it was it was a great learning ground, yeah. especially since I had received no formal broadcast training okay. anywhere. So that was um, a really good place to start, and I appreciate being employed at mm -hmm. TBC at the time. So from there, you know, I you know I had different goals mm -hmm. and motivations. It was it was scary at first. Right. I remember going in, there was a session. And they brought in. They were. They considered. They said we need um, announcers. After like trying for about two years for auditions, mm -hmm. I finally got the opportunity to come in and train as an announcer for when staff weren't able to come to work. Mm -hmm. And there was a room of about, I'm sure about 15 people were there, giving being given this opportunity. And out of the 15, two of us remained. Okay. A lot of people had jobs. The calls to the radio station were very infrequent, right. so it could not really, it couldn't pay a rent, it, you know, it couldn't really buy groceries or anything. Right. Um, I was living at home at the time, that's what saved me, mm -hmm. so that I was allowed to actually venture into this career that wasn't immediately paying off, yes. but I had the opportunity to actually be there. Mm -hmm. I called myself the emergency girl because they would always um, <laughs> call me like, like 4 o'clock, church for 4 o'clock. Wow, okay. So, um, and I was, I would make myself available. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so that's how I kind of started and uh, I did that for like about a few months until 
I moved over to this station, 95.1, which was my dream station to work on because okay. I grew up listening to 95. Okay. And I always wanted to work there. And eventually I was given the opportunity to go there. I worked in the morning for about two years and I also became the morning's producer. So I got a, I got a little different side yeah. Yeah. as well. From and behind then, the scenes. And then I was producing for um, 105. Uh, Mix Nuts program in the morning and Sangeet 106 FM, their mid morning program. And I did that for a good few years, also announcing on 105, and then I moved to 96.1. Yes. And while I was there, I also worked at Synergy TV and then for a year, and then I left there and I was at TV6. Mm -hmm. I was given the opportunity to be at TV6. And while at TV6, um, I was given another opportunity again and I eventually went to CNMG. And all through that time, my husband and I, we also have a recording studio. So we do productions and any other stuff that happens, I was doing, yeah. so I was doing everything, as well as being a mommy wow. and a wife. You yeah. Know. So, yeah. But I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, you had a good practice with, five, with four other siblings, you know, to oh. really, to, to manage to, every... To multitask, yeah. yes, basically. So, I guess I couldn't keep myself exactly. quiet at no, all. No, I, well, I mean, I think once you get used to that kind of thing, it's just like, that's that's just who you are at the end of the day. Um, so give me give me some uh, highlights in terms of you know just your experience just so far. I mean, I know that you said that you had that training in terms of more of a hands-on type of training, and I always thought honestly that you you actually went and you studied and that sort of thing. Well, I read a lot and I watch a lot of television, yeah. and I and you know I have always been studying my my industry, yeah. and it never stops because it's always changing. changing Everything yeah. you know, things change every day. You know, mm. new styles, you know, new presentations. Yeah. So you know, you just have to like keep be current, there and yeah. be in the know and yeah. always know what everybody is doing yeah. all the time because by the, you know whatever technical training you get by yes. the time you actually get to put it into practice they might be doing something else yes exactly so yeah basically they're just giving you groundwork off yeah. the top of your head though give me one highlight of, of uh, hmm. your career thus far of my career thus far there's so many, it's like every night yeah. was like a highlight. Mm. Every night, you know, yeah. getting on the set yeah. and that on air light came on. That yeah. that was that was basically how I used to get a lot of butterflies before. Okay. Um, you know, which is good. Yeah. And I get worried when you stop getting butterflies for anything. That mm. you know that maybe um the spark is it's fading oh, yeah. and you know, I guess that's what gets me to start thinking about the next project or mm. doing something else to facilitate and get you excited again yeah. because you know the the stories are different every night but the package is the same so you can end up just falling into a routine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and forgetting you know you know why you ended up there in the first yes. place and you know how according to a lot of people how grateful and privileged you should be yeah. that you're getting the opportunity of your dream job because you can forget that it's a dream job right? yes I know I mean, we talked a little bit about you know being at home and having that comfort at least until things sort of picked up was there any time that you felt like okay you know what am I doing I should be you know doing something else and you know maybe just because you know it, it probably was a little tough at the time um, there were there have been times there have been different occasions, there mm -hmm. are times that I thought that I felt like the industry or certain places I was working at the time mm -hmm. with too many po too much politics right. and um, especially when I got into the media it was very, and to some people will still say, very male dominated. Mm -hmm. So it's hard, it was hard for a woman to really get a, like a fair chance, right. you know, a chance used to be you are the one female voice on the radio station because we just feel like we should at least have one, right. you know, to you know, to comfort the public or yes. whatever. So, and not necessary that you're there because um, we actually think you're a good announcer. Yes. Because uh, the male announcers will still get um, other opportunities besides right. just you know be wow. okay. from the females. So there had times I did think about it, um, but then I thought about being in an office yes. behind a desk mm. and I it, it was a dreaded thought <laughs> yes and I was like no I'll struggle through this sure, right. and uh, I because I'm happy doing what I what I what yes. I'm doing right now yes then they may have had times when I just thought I should add to my skills I was like I, I mean I I don't imagine that I'll be in front of the camera forever so I was um, I would say to myself um, 
what am I what would I do right. when it's time to retire from in front of the camera yes but um, luckily I built other skills along the way like producing programming you know writing yes. so I don't feel uh, very nervous about it mm -hmm. like I may have done like, like eight years ago when I figured the only skill I had was presenting. Presenting, yeah. Did that that experience in terms of you know dealing with being on a male-dominated uh, type of field did it spark any insecurities being a woman? Because I know sometimes and again as you said, uh, you know you want you want to make sure that people are respecting what you're doing. It's not just oh you're there because you're a female, but because okay you're good at what you do. Um, you know, did that ever, you know, how did that affect you in terms of just a person or as a woman rather? Well, I think just being a woman, mm -hmm. I mean, we are, uh, we have adapted yeah. to this is what life what actually is. is. It's like, mm -hmm. we don't know it otherwise, we don't know it being the privileged gender. Yes. So how how we facilitate and we work at this, at how we are, is, yeah. this is this is the life we live. Yes. There's not really an option. We're trying to create options. Mm -hmm. We're trying to you know, elevate ourselves and, and yes, always have that respect. Yeah. I was lucky where I felt that that was the en the energy that I projected all throughout my career. Mm -hmm. So I never, I never really received, you know, favors right. or, um, or um, you know, that I was trying to, I was trying to use my assets as some would say it. Mm -hmm. I was actually just using the skills that I had. Yes. I was honest if I didn't, I was I was unsure about things, I would ask questions even of my male colleagues mm -hmm. and I think they respected that and they actually returned the favor by giving me information mm -hmm. um, and also fairly giving me opportunities mm -hmm. based on my skill level. Yeah. Uh, there were times when things, I thought things weren't happening fast enough for my career yes. and I can look back now and I could say, you know, maybe a, a male colleague might have said, you're not ready yet. Right. And I would have, and now I could look back and I can say, at that time I would have been upset. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh no, you know, mm -hmm. you know, how could they say that? I am ready because I'm, you know, in my mind, I was ready to take those two steps. Yeah. But I could look back now and say, say that everything happened at the right time. Yes. And when they, when it didn't happen, I was ready for it. Yeah. You've had the years in media and perhaps maybe, you know, now you're forging your own path. You're moving forward now. Uh, anything new <laughs> to say? <laughs> well, I have resigned from the news desk yes. after 13 years sitting there. Wow. About 13 years, about 13. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am bringing my own creativity, the, 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 the TV, yeah. the TV frames locked in my head and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm now bringing that to my own personal production, which mm -hmm. is Baby Babble. My what was a parenting website has now evolved into a television show. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm really excited about mm -hmm. that, and that's that's a new journey. Yes. That's a new journey. That's and it's, somebody follow your heart. Exactly, and it's sort of, it just it sort of taps into now you being also a parent and and having that life and now being be able to well, focus well, all through my media i was yeah. a parent yeah. but i was a very i, I would be honest, say that i was a very busy mm -hmm. parent i was almost a distracted parent uh -huh. and for my second child i knew that um i had to you know make him more of a priority yes and uh, you know because that you know when i had my first son i start i was a a point a single parent so i had that to deal with mm -hmm. and then i was a parent, a dating parent, and right. then a remarried one. But it was also when my second child came, and I was in the media, I said, I did not want, I wanted to pay more attention. Mm -hmm. And not that I said, not that I thought that I made mistakes, but I wanted to be certain I was doing it better. Right. So I really made a conscious effort to educate myself more, mm -hmm. and uh, you, you know, from the parenting from the from the pregnancy mm -hmm. to the toddler stages be more understanding yeah. maybe a better communicator mm -hmm. and not just go and watch TV and go and play mommy's busy and right. actually be a more involved parent mm -hmm. and that basically kind of sparked the passion that I realized you know connecting with other women who mm -hmm. are working who yes. are busy who make you know who have more than one child who are single parents who are 
married with four kids that everybody is still doing that. You never, the one child doesn't teach you everything. Exactly. Bringing a second is another adventure by itself. Different personality to maybe. Exactly, yeah, exactly. and different challenges mm -hmm. with children and technology, um, you know, you know, them being more exposed to different things than mm -hmm. my first child was 10 years ago. Right. So it's constantly changing and evolving. And when you talk to any parent, nobody has the right answers. Mm. Everybody is just, you know, they're looking for different styles and information that they're comfortable with. Yes. And of course it all, you know, leads to, you know, um, your ethics, your values, and everything is all mixed up in there when it comes to parenting. So there's no right and wrong. Yes. And because we're all searching, some people just don't know where to find the information. Mm -hmm. You go on the internet, there are like hundreds of Ex discussion yes, exactly. rooms with yeah. people talking about parenting that sometimes always leads to a fight. Yes. Because somebody said something it's and they, they wouldn't do this with their child exactly. and whatever. So it just it just got me there to say that, you know, I'm just looking for a platform and a forum, especially for Trinidad and Tobago, mm. where maybe you can go and get some answers or something that could lead you into the right direction when it comes to my child. I think my child is autistic. What do I do next? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I'm a, a single parent, How? but I would like to work from home. How do I manage being at home and looking after my kids? Yeah. Who else is there out there to support me? So, you know, it's like support forums, it's, it's expert advice, but it's all packaged there. Hopefully you get you look at it and that you get to take something away from it and you know yeah. you could just feel a little more comforted than the parenting that you're doing yes it's good enough it's no. good enough for right. your child and for your family you don't have to feel guilty about it exactly <laughs> what i mean looking back now um in terms of you know the first day until now and now again having your own brand and building that um let's say you look 20 years from now or 30 years from now what would you want your legacy to be or you know how Ooh, I, don't know. Um, I, 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 I want my legacy to be that you know my my kids are happy yeah i i really think that and that their mother did all of that was um that she could for them and she you know she she really tried her best and i you know that they could say they were proud of her and you know so yeah. that she did a good job no matter what it is she was doing if she was at play if she was at work if she was just spending time with us mm -hmm. that, you know, yeah. I, I don't i don't necessarily want to be leaving up um i'm trying to leave a legacy to impress anyone else right but your children basically and my family yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> if it happens to it's impress somebody else yeah. that's great <laughs> what would you i mean say to maybe a young person a young woman particularly in these times i know that you know there's so much that we're bombarded with and there's so many people that tell us okay we have to look a certain way or talk a certain way um and at the end of the day we have to obviously love who we are what would you tell that young woman growing up now in in these modern times i think just really you just have to be comfortable with yourself yeah. you, i mean you you know Every woman, I think, knows what they're about, mm -hmm. and it's really not about impressing anyone but yourself. Really, yeah. you have to, you know, if you, you, I got. I had a story like when I first went for my TV six interview. I the first interview I went to that I was invited to come to. I, I was like, I was trying to push buttons. Mm. I did not dress the part, and I purposely did not dress the part okay. because I was like, you know what? If they want me, yeah. they would they would want the person that they see in front of them, not the person that they think I'm going to try to be. Right. So I, I did the whole jeans thing, the psychedelic nails, the <laughs> you know million and one errands. But it was it was you know I was young then and mm -hmm. it was more like a test because I was getting into a part of the media I really didn't know about mm -hmm. that I just visualized was stiff and cool mm -hmm. and a bit you know a bit unfriendly yes and I was in radio which was a lot more relaxed Last. and I felt like I had a family in radio mm -hmm. so when I did go to that interview I did go as who I was at that time right. Sammy Joe and I went to Sammy Joe and they still wanted me which was and that sort of impressed me because mm -hmm. I was like these people could actually look beyond, beyond the, yes. the, you know the appearance and they they could see something that they could work with that they and it did it did work 
and um, yeah, I'm just saying, you know, you just because every stage in your life you're a little different. Yeah, you know, you, you know, you change, you, your experiences change you. So your your appearance change, mm -hmm. but it's really from within. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> so just proud, being with me. I mean, I I was again really excited to have you on it. I mean, I'm just. I'm still a little nervous because I'm like, oh my god, I'm so excited. coming. I was like, oh, I'm telling everybody, she's coming, she's coming. Okay. So thank you so much. Well, again. thanks for having me. Yes, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you very much.